Good afternoon. Um, I'm going to call the Finance and Audit Committee meeting to order and read the statement of announcement for July 6, um, 3.30 meeting. The meeting notice announcing the date, time, and place of the July 6, 2022 Finance and Audit Committee meeting was distributed July 3, 2022 to appropriate media and other groups or individuals who have requested notification. The announcement and agenda were posted to the Department of Disabilities and Special Needs, Central Administrative Office, and on the website, Americans with Disabilities Act. The public has been notified that accommodations such as interpreters, mobility assistance, or other assistance will be provided to individuals with disabilities and special needs if requested in advance. All right. Um, the next um, item on our agenda is um, our invocation. Let us pray. In 1 Corinthians chapter 29, Scripture is your invitation to receive God's blessings, act as a wise financial steward of his riches, and build a secure financial future. Today, we ask for your wisdom and discernment to best meet the needs of the individuals DDSN and our providers serve every day. We are thankful for your blessings, including living in a country that values and protects life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. In your name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> if I could get a motion to adopt the agenda as presented. So move. Baron Alfers. All right, second. Great. All right. Um, no further discussion. The meeting, the meeting agenda is approved as written. The next item on our agenda is reviewing the minutes from the June, um, I believe it was June 6th. Yes, June 6th Finance and Audit Committee meeting, um, which is on page two of your packet. And I get a motion to approve the minutes. Barry? So moved, but I don't have any changes to it. Okay, okay. Second, okay. A first and a second. And uh, if there are no uh, additional um, comments, um, then we'll um, approve the minutes um, for the June 6th meeting as uh, written. All right, the next item on our agenda is um, the financial approval and threshold report by Candace Golston. Good afternoon. Uh, we only have one on the on the financial threshold to get approval for for um, the ground maintenance um, contract solicitation that we published on um, April 29th um, and we received three bids that um, the bid opening date was on May 27th. Um, we evaluated the bids and the lowest responsible and responsible bidder um, for a one-year contract with four renewals so it's a five-year period contract. Um, for the five-year period, the contract amount would be $255,060. Uh, we did have one um, item on the bid schedule for a one-time um, performance. And so the total award for this contract would be $257,010. Um, we did seek approval from um, SPA, MMO, before you know, to approve our award to this particular vendor. So they've given us the blessing to proceed with the award. Um, so. Commissioner Blackwood. Yes. This is Commissioner Rawlinson. Um, this is on the grounds bank, is that correct? Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. um, is there, I know you and I had talked about like wanting to work with um, Vote Rehab and possibly get um, Charles Leeson, one of our consumers, to do our landscaping work and see if we could get that approved. I, are we going to sign a five-year contract before we go and try to get that worked out? Or I, I just I hate to see us enter into a five-year contract for something 
if we're going to be working to try to get that changed in the next legislative session? Um, I think a lot of legwork has to be done to make something like that happen because um, of the arrangement between um, DDSN and Voc Rehab in terms of employment um, services. And so I know that more has to be looked into that to determine if it is ever going to be viable and possible. Um, right. You know, uh, so, you know, to your point, a um, five year contract um, might not be the the wisest decision. Do we have to do a five year contract? Or um, well, we've you know? already solicited. So that's what we've already put out for, you know, the solicitation. Now there is a termination for convenience clause in the solicitation. Um, if we no longer want service or what, you know, whatever, and you got to remember it, um, it's a one year contract with four renewals. So we do have the option to cancel the solicitation if we decide to do something else, given the fact that what you just stated, that we have to do some legwork. I think it's good to have this in place just in case that is not a viable option um, or the time just does not permit, you know, for that particular schedule to have something in place already. Right. So we would just have to that go. Is to going to, that is going to be one of our top our legislative office. priorities is to work that out with a vote rehab. So um, I just want to make sure we aren't tied in for five years on, on something that we need to support our consumers. Yeah, it's one year with four, four renewals. So each renewal period, you have a certain time period to notify the vendor um, okay. that we're not to, you know, we opt out of going into the renewal period. Okay. And That's good. The, the estimate here is for total five years or, yes. and, or and so broken down by year would be five divided into 266 right right okay gotcha so that's not the annual cost that's the no that's five, five, year. five year yeah yes. okay is there a termination clause or payment if we don't choose to renew and yes it comes up? yes there's a is, it, is there a payment amount to not renew no no no, there's not a payment. We don't have to pay out the existing period for the contract if we decide not to renew. It's whatever service has been rendered during that contract period for performance. Right. Yes. Um, Very good. I don't know about the legislative agenda piece, but I did want to share that one of the things that Candace has been working toward has been interfacing with NMO to find out if there would be occasions in which um, we could prioritize or weight um, the fact that a bidder utilizes individuals with disabilities to perform the service. So um, I'm not familiar with the, the voc rehab bit, but I did want to share that that is yeah. something that we've been talking about as an agency, and Candace has been working on that, and we'll, we, we'll keep you updated. And just to post, just to feedback on what you said, Dr. Fry, is that we reach out to like Babcock Center when we have things come up mm -hmm. to get our consumers or get our individuals involved in everything when it comes to service to do, um, even with our janitorial service. Sometimes they just opt out not to do it because they don't have the capacity. Um, one thing to keep in mind, a lot of these in, industries of services are having the same issues with employment. Um, and when it comes to our consumer, we have a lot of things that take in consideration with COVID, you know, going up and down and having these waves. I don't think there's a risk involved of taking on a contract this um, big when, you know, doing due diligence as far as keeping your obligation as a, a contractor. Sometimes those things are factoring in why they don't submit an offer. Um, but anybody that is registered in skis are seeing these bids go out um, in Skivo because we, you know, notify everybody. So um, they have the option to submit an offer. Um, so I just want to put that out there saying that we are reaching out to our the consumers that we serve in the area. I know that um, Commissioner Rawlinson and I had heard from a board that said um, they were unable to provide services for DDSN because of a voc rehab agreement that they're not able, they cannot get around. Okay. So we, that's why we brought it up. Okay. And that's why Stephanie and I are really 
looking at that because if the rehab for some reason is um, uh, preventing us from doing that, we want to know how we can change that. Okay. Um, if it, in fact, will benefit, you know, the boards more and our, our individuals that we serve who are looking for employment, who want employment, employment opportunities and who can work. So um, that's why we brought it up. Okay. So, okay. All right. I was just, I was yeah. just going to ask, um, how does this compare to the last contract that we had with the last person that 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 bid? It's more Barry. Um, um, I mean, what what percentage more? Uh, I don't remember. Um, I would have to pull it up and provide that information to follow up with you guys. But it is probably probably a hundred thousand dollars more. Um, a lot of our bids that we've been receiving for services such as these are increased. Um, one thing you got to take in consideration is gas prices and where the economy is, is right now. And then staffing shortages and stuff like that. And I know, you know, that's kind of hard to understand sometimes, but that is just typically what's happening across the state with a lot of these bids that are not just for DDS and for other agencies. Um, just talking to some of my peers that are at other agencies, um, they are experiencing high um, high costs for their bids when they get in the back, you know. So um, that's just how things are, right? Well, we just need we just need I mean we just need to reevaluate this thing when the when the first toward the end of the first year, which would be I don't I don't know whether we have to give them two months notice or three months notice or what. But we just need to reevaluate at the end of that time to see whether we want to do anything about it or not. We may not, but we don't want that time to pass us by um, without, without, you know, without realizing that it's passed us by. If you understand what I'm saying, I don't. Do you know if the contract says we have to give 60 days notice or 30 or 90 or what? Um, it is 30 day notice. Well, then about 60 days out, we need to reevaluate this and see if we've gotten anywhere with vote rehab situation um, or anything else for that or, or whatever else. We'd, I, I assume it'd be the vote rehab situation, but we just need to we just need to make a somebody needs to make a note to, to look back into this about 10 months from now. OK. Um, uh, I agree. I yeah. um, all right, then. Well, uh, if. There are no other comments or questions, then we just need a motion to approve um, this uh, solicitation for um, the ground maintenance. Um, this won't necessarily have to go to a formal commission vote. It's somewhat um, routine in nature, but um, I think we just need to vote on it right for the this committee, right, Candace? Okay. All right. Can I get a motion to approve this um, cost? So move. Second. Great. Thanks. Okay. So if there's no further questions or discussions, the um, the uh, request is approved. Um, okay. Uh huh. All right. So the next item on our agenda is the annual report of all non-service expenditures by vendor over 200,000. Nancy Bumbaugh is supposed to present. Yeah. Great. Good afternoon. Yeah. This report is an annual report that we started last year. It's a post-payment review of um, just to add visibility to separate contracts and purchase orders that added up throughout the year that crossed the threshold of 200,000 for any one vendor. Do you have any questions? And that is um, on page seven through nine of your packet um, for the committee members. Um, And this was um, one fiscal year, right? So last, okay. Last. 
from July to July, July 1st. Okay. Now, um, one request I would like to make is in this, instead of presenting this in July, move it to August because we still have a couple of weeks of payments and invoices coming in. Yeah. So this is not a clean year to date report. So if we could move it to August for next year, it would be a better time. Well, we we could table it if you want until until next month. Well, if you would like for me to do that, I can rerun it and um, present it next month so it would be complete. Um, I would say that, um, I mean, another option would be just to, we're not, have to, we're not approving anything. This is just informational <coughs> only. So because we don't have to vote on anything, we could, um, just have you send it to us as a committee and we'll have the most recent copy of it at that time. I don't know that it would be, do you see a reason, Barry, we need to be on an agenda again? If we just at least get a copy of it? Not necessarily, not, not, not particularly in my case. I'll talk about that at the end of this meeting, but yeah, not particularly in my case, you're right. Um, okay. okay, well then um, we'll just have you send it to us when okay. it's complete and we'll have the final version um, at a later date, yep. I just, I'm just curious on the reasonableness check. Is that just to see if, what is that? That it's reasonable expenditures yeah. for caring of our consumers. Based on like. Their, Based on some yeah, historical information historical and, and what we experienced in the prior year. Okay. I was just wondering what this. Yeah. Okay. The word reasonable actually. Yeah. That's good that they're all reasonable. Um, okay, I was just looking over to see um, if I had any questions for you on this. Um, I don't think I do for this meeting. Um, if anybody doesn't have any other questions, then we'll just um, make sure Nancy gets us the, the final um, copy uh, when it is uh, finalized. So. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the next item um, on the agenda, the financial update, which is page 10 of your packet. And Nancy, again, is going to. On page 10 is the um, updated spending plan versus actual expenditures as of June 29th. Um, and once again, this is not a full annual year. So I would like to provide a final report next month yeah. that would be um, concise. It shows that DDSN has cash expenditures of $621.7 million out the door. Expenditures showing on um, HHS's books is $190.5 million. So those two added together. Total expenditures for our consumers are $812.2 million. So we're currently 4.57% under our budgeted spending plan. Um, so I know you said this isn't final yet, but um, depending on how much is on under our spending plan, it just rolls over to the next year or we just like how does that how do we do that mm -hmm. <laughs> okay we would start with a, a new spending plan for next year um i believe the majority of it being under is like day programs being a little bit yeah. less than what we expected or what we projected um so i know that that that's the the main difference from our projection from last year <coughs> So we're we're planning on reevaluating that and bringing it down so that we can be closer to correct for next year, right? Yes, yeah, so you can hold my feet to the fire. You're talking about millions of dollars over budget right now. Four, eight hundred and something million dollars at four percent is about, um, eight, well, it's forty million dollars, um, over, and I don't think we're really forty million dollars over. We just projected forty million dollars less, right? We don't have $40 million more than we expected to have, do we? We're under 
under Barry. I under. mean, under. We don't. We don't have. We're under. We're under about. We're off about forty million bucks. So, um, or a little more than that, actually. So, um, I just think we need to. I, I hope we can reevaluate that and make it a little closer next year than, than what it is now, because we're not actually. We're not doing that. I mean, we're not, we're anyway. It should be closer than that. That's all I'm saying. Dr. Fry, this is Stephanie. Um, is there any way when we pull when we pull the data to show the commission next month that we can actually put last year's numbers next to this past year's, like back it up for two years, so we can see either we've gone up or gone down. In, in those service lines and that kind of thing, um, number wise? I'm, I'm going to say yes, as I look at Nancy. Um, <laughs> and, and I do just, I know that everyone here is aware, but some of the predictability in the context of COVID has been really difficult. So um, I would imagine, I think that everything, whether, even if we go back two years, we could show, but it would, it, um, Projecting will will still be somewhat. Um, it won't be as confident as we would like, um, given the challenges of COVID. Certainly, certainly, I get that. I just kind of want to see where we where we started, where we're at, and you know, if we can. I know we're trying to get the numbers a little closer, but as soon as we can get that, that would be great. Okay. Um, and you know, this is the first year that we've showed the wash of, that happens on HHS's books. But I do have the information, so I could also prepare that for the prior year. Okay. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, next up uh, is item on uh, sale of the property um, from York County on Diana, Diane Road, 1.6 acres, and Andrew Theron is going to um, talk to us about that. Yes, this is, um, as you know, just a repeat from uh, last month. Yeah. And just to provide some updates on it, um, last month uh, the committee requested an updated appraisal on the property. And just to kind of give a little re recap on this property, it was discovered that the agency owned this property in 2019. It was deeded to us in back in the 80s, um, unbeknownst to us. Um, yeah. When we discovered it, uh, we didn't have any plans for it, so we wanted to move forward and, and uh, sell the property. And um, uh, some work was done at the time. I think a lot of stuff got cut on hold due to COVID. And um, we had an appraisal at the time that showed it was worth $20,000. Um, we updated that. You can see down at the bottom. In your handout that uh, the most recent appraisal shows it at uh, thirty-five thousand dollars. So um, we would keep half of that upon the sale. Um, but the next step would be after the commission approval was to um, hand it over to Department of Administration and to uh, CBRE for them to list it and sell. Um, the property has to be sold on the open market. Is that correct? Okay. Um, at or above the appraised value. Okay. Um, all right. Um, are there any questions for Andrew um, before we go? Do, do we decide? Do we decide who the real? In this case, would the Department of Administration decide who the real estate agent was for this matter, or would or would we decide? There, there's a real estate agent on state contract. It, um, it's on the handout here is CBRE. They are the state contract real estate agent who <coughs> handle, handle the sale. So, th so there, there's only one. That's the only one real estate agent that we have on on the contract. Is that right? That's correct. Yes. <laughs> That's a sweet deal. Okay. What is the commission rate on that? Oh, I, I, I don't know. I'd have to look. I'm that. sure he don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not familiar with how they operate. Um, well, you have to say he you're probably going to tell us we have to sell through them, right? Because they're the only ones contracted through the state, right? That's correct. But I figured. All right, so. Um, yeah, we don't. 
Any other questions on this before we uh, give approval? I'm thankful that, you know, we don't have to sell it. It, it can sell it above the appraised value. And, I, you know, with the, with the way the market is going right now in the, in the housing market, especially up in York County, um, you know, lots are not cheap. And that's, that's dirt cheap for a lot on a paved road. Yeah, it's actually two, two lots next to each other, and it is next yeah. to a golf course. So. It's next door to what now? Say it again. It's, it's next to a golf course, so it's uh. Yeah, uh, I mean, this is. The, I mean, in Florence, <laughs> these kind of lots are selling for fifty to sixty thousand dollars a piece, and I mean, they've got us priced at thirty-five thousand for this appraisal, and I, I just find that hard to believe. York County being that close to Charlotte, on a golf course with a creek in the backyard. Um, Michelle, you live in York County. W what are you seeing the prices over there at? I think it, it's expensive to live in York County. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, um, if it's in, if, if it, like if it's in York, I mean York. There's like a lot of different cities in York County. So York, South Carolina, it might be. A little bit different. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if it's on a golf course. It's not on a golf course. No, it's, it's not on. It's, a, it's right. across the street in the, in the near area, but it's, it's not on a golf course. I mean, I feel like any property these days are going for a lot. So hopefully we'll get more than the appraised yeah. price. Hopefully that would be nice. Um, I'm sure you're, the real estate experts will hopefully um, want that you know, to be yeah. the case yeah. but I, sus I suspect this is another department of administration final decision to make whether we sell it or not right and how uh, much it sells for yeah i mean we would work with them on the listing price once we got to that point um but it's ultimately our decision on whether or not we want to sell that's i mean now's oh, we, the time <laughs> to sell it but you need to get what it's worth you don't just give it away well i mean yeah. We've, I think $35,000 is giving it away. Well, we're just, I mean, can we, we need to see what, um, I guess when it, I don't know if we have much, I mean, I, I, I'm just not sure what, what authority we have and what authority the Department of Administration has in this matter is what I'm wondering. I mean, can we decide what it, what it lists for? Can we decide? Um, yeah, we, we could, we could, you know, this is just the appraised value. So, you know, we would, we would have input on what to list it at once we um, got to that point with, with, uh, with the real estate company. Why don't we get it to that point with the real estate company and then let them bring it back to us and tell us what the real estate company up there says it's worth. Yeah, again, that's just the appraised value. So, you know, difference between appraised values and, and sell values, there's always some difference there. <laughs> Who has been paying the tax property taxes on this property? Have we been doing it? Um, that's a good question. Um, given it's state property, I'm yeah. Sure what what taxes would be associated with it? Like, I don't know that? if they have property taxes or not. They pay. I don't think there's a tax associated with it. Okay. So it sounds like um, we want you to go and talk with the real estate company and find out what they think we should list it at. Yeah, and then bring that back to us. And last comment I just want to make on this topic is uh, I'm presenting this, but Vicki Wilkes, who works in our financial department, she's done a lot of legwork on this. Uh, since you discovered the property in 2019. So I just want to thank her for everything she's done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad it was discovered that uh, we had some property that has value on it. So, um, okay. Well, then, um, is that all, Andrew, on yes, this? That's it for that topic. Okay. Okay. Well, wait, 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 wait. Well, Robin, we didn't vote here. So we're voting to get him to, to bring it back to us next month. Yeah, you need to vote to get him to bring it back to us, yeah. 
Okay, make the motion. I, I make a motion that we that we have him that we have the the next month's finance committee meeting that they bring back the um the the information from the from the actual real estate agent that is contracted with the state to tell us what they would like us to list it for and um to make a decision at that time to list it. Okay, second. All right. So no further discussion. The motion um is approved. All right, Andrew, the next item on our agenda is the consideration bids for Coastal uh, 110 Reef Replacement. Yeah, sure. On this topic, I want to thank Candace for getting up here and breaking the ice on um, higher budgets before I got up here on this topic. Right. This is a roof replacement for uh, Coastal Center Dorm uh, Highlands Building 110. Um, this was a project that was listed on our five-year CPIP uh, plan uh, last year, and it was approved by the commission uh, may 25th well no um, may 20th 2021 um at that time we had this project budgeted at about two hundred eighty five thousand dollars. that budget estimate was um uh, basically gotten from a previous projects we've done where we replaced similar roofs um you can see on the, the handout in 2019 we replaced uh, the roof at Highlands 310, which is an identical roof for $274,000. Um, we put this out to bid and those bids on May 25th, 2022. Our, uh, we received two bids with a low bid of $382,836. Uh, $382, so um, it's significantly more than the last time we've done a uh, similar roof of this kind. I also included in the packet a letter from um, REI engineers. This is our roofing consultant on this job. Um, what I wanted them to um, provide was some information on what the industry is doing these days, what the markets are looking like. And um, also you can see that they provided a, another example of, of a project they're handling right now in USC that was significantly over budget. Um, materials for this type of work has just gone through the roof ever since uh, you know, probably the beginning of this year. Since last fall, um, that's the main increase uh, for this price. Um, but it is the cost of doing business and with our new roofs these days. So it's significantly more than the last time we did it. But that is the price for a little bit. So you are asking for our approval? Yes. Yeah. Take the full position and move forward with our contract. So far, we've just taken bids on this. And, uh, if, if we give our approval, how long before they're going to do the work? Uh, we would enter into the contract phase. It would probably take us a month or so to get it fully executed. And uh, we would start ordering materials. And we would probably start construction probably uh, probably three months from now is probably realistic to start doing work. Uh, this is one that we knew materials were, were kind of in short supply. We've always had this fall kind of pegged as a start date for this project. Um, so I would assume that's still, still what we're looking at. So this roof is, was, a fish, was, the last roof, the current roof, it was uh, installed on 2001. Uh, no, the, la the last similar roof was installed in 2019. The, this place, the coastal. The coastal yeah. 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 From 2001. Yeah. Okay, so it's 21 years old. So this oh, yeah. is the 21-year-old roof, right? That's correct. Right. Yeah, this is the worst roof on, on, on Coastal Center campus. So it's one of our worst offenders. Um, it's, it does have active problems. Um, you know, uh, it's, it's one that requires constant repair. And it's our it's one of our worst offenders. So okay. All right. Well, um someone like to make a motion to approve this. I mean they obviously need a new roof and I, I would most certainly recommend moving forward with it based on the condition of the existing roof. I so move that we move forward with the with the bid that we have. Yes, okay. So um 
The motion approves. If there's no other discussion, um, we, uh, we can move on to the next item. So thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Um, the next item is an uh, internal audit update from Courtney Gillespie. Thank you. Mm -hmm. so I usually start with um, an update on our agreed upon procedures report. So there hasn't been a significant change since last month. We've been focused on trying to complete our audit plan um, and some of our outstanding audits and technical assistance visits. I'll tell you that you know, there are approximately 16 reports remaining to review. So we're over 80% complete with the review, um, but I'm happy to provide those um, specific numbers if anyone's interested in boards versus private providers and how many are left. A uh, quick update on um, the fiscal year 22 audit plan. So we were able to complete field work on all but two engagements. So one is an audit and the other is a technical assistance visit. We call those TABs for short that were included in our audit plan for fiscal year 22. Um, so this is normal. So your audit plan is designed to be flexible so that you can accommodate management requests um, and when they're changing priorities. So uh, because of that flexibility, so some of the audits that are included in your plan could be carried forward into a subsequent year. So the two that we uh, will be carrying forward, they were both management requests that were added to the plan. And um, we put together a draft fiscal year 23 audit plan of hours that are available and we've accounted for the hours needed to complete those engagements in the fiscal year 23 audit plan budget. Um, we do have several engagements in the work paper review and reporting stage and should have final engagement communications, whether that be an audit report or a technical assistance visit letter issued shortly. So I am continuing to work on that fiscal year 23 audit plan. I shared a, a rough draft with Commissioner Blackwood um, during our update earlier this morning. So we do have some additional work to do on our risk assessment, and we'll get that audit plan to you for approval as soon as the risk assessment is complete. So uh, we anticipate that being presented to you for review and approval at the audit, uh, I'm sorry, the August meetings of the Finance and Audit Committee and the full commission. So, and again, that fiscal year 23 audit plan does include the two carry forward engagements from the 22 audit plan, along with follow up procedures on our outstanding corrective action plans. So that's going to be our focus until that fiscal year 23 audit plan is presented for approval. So we have completed a number of follow up procedures since our last meeting, and we're working to finalize the memos that we issue to management once the follow up is complete. So we'll update our tracking report to include those results and I'll email a copy of that updated tracking report for the work that was completed as of June 30th to you in advance of, to you in advance of the July commission meeting. So may I answer any questions? I'm good. We have a okay. I just had a I just had a comment, Courtney. Would you mind giving me a call whenever Who's this meeting's over about um, one other issue I wanted to ask you about? Sure. Thank you. Thanks, for Thanks. All right. The last item on our agenda is um, the um, chief financial update from Nancy Rumbaugh. Okay, for the CFO update, um, our fiscal year 21 cost reports were uploaded to HHS this past Tuesday, June 28th. Um, so now we're back to the fiscal 20 cost reports that are in progress. Um, Debbie Ponzerusi, did I say it correctly? <laughs> You're going to know. <laughs> she said those are due August 14th to HHS and they, and they are on schedule. Um, I touched base with the state auditor's office about our agreed upon procedure um, review that they were doing. We should receive findings by the end of this week for us to respond to. So it, it is on schedule. Um, the DOT grant for um, the ADA 
accessible wheelchair van did get um, submitted on time. And last, as a reminder, even though we received 10 million and 34,000 in new state dollars, <coughs> we will have to turn over 8.9 million of that 10 million to HHS. Those are for priority one and two, as we presented to the legislators through the Ways and Means and the Senate Finance, that if they were funded and fee for service went through, those dollars will become HHS's dollars. So we will have to turn those over. And then those would also have to be built into our fiscal year 24 budget as a permanent transfer so it will remain in their base. Okay. 8.9 million each year. For this current year, it'll be a one-time transfer, and then we will build it into the budget request so the basis of the agencies will get reconciled. So that'll happen every year, likely? No. Okay, just once it, once it gets built into the base, that's gotcha. it. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, questions? No, I'm good. Uh, Barry, do you have any? No, I don't. I don't have any other questions for her right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, our next meeting, um, the date has not been set yet. So um, when it is, um, we'll, we'll certainly share that um, for the next finance and audit committee meeting. Um, for August. Uh, so, um, can I get a motion to adjourn? Wait, wait, wait before you do oh. that. Okay. Um, uh, I just want to say that, um, because, because our, the chairman of our commission thinks it's best and for our commission in general, um, I will be moving on to another committee, not, I will still be vice chairman of the board, just like I have been, but I'll be moving on to another committee. <laughs> Legislative Affairs Committee starting next month, and so I will not be here on a monthly basis. Actually, um, Mr. Um, um, Miller, Mr. Miller will be with us. Will, we will be with us in in my place. So, um, I that does not mean I will not be interested in what the policy committee, what the finance committee does, and it will nearly be as um, as interested as I am now, it's just that we think that's best for the commission as a whole. So, um, so that's what we are going to do. So, I, I didn't want to say that I appreciate the time that I've had here, and I appreciate Robin's opportunity to to chime in at any time with any comments that I had because I had plenty of them, and I'll have plenty more in, in the in the in the um, commission meetings as well regarding finance and other things as I've always had. But I did want to thank her very much for um, allowing me to be such a part of our committee and a um, and an intricate part of it. And we'll just have to see if I'm back on next year or not. Well, it just depends on what's best for the commission as a whole is what we'll do. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Barry. We value your input and the finance uh, audit committee meeting will not be the same without you. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much. Very nice. Okay. So can you adjourn uh, your fin your last finance and audit committee meeting? Um, yes, I certainly will. For, for a whole year. I won't be back for a whole year, maybe, and maybe longer. I don't know. So I would like to take this opportunity to adjourn our meeting. All right. Second. Great. Okay. We stand adjourned at 414. Um, thanks, everybody. <laughs>